I know what people are probably going to say about this. I know they're going to say, oh, the season doesn't start for another five months. We got a long way to go. Blah, 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 blah. It, it's still two weeks until the draft. You know, I get all that. But before the draft, I want to take this video to talk about what I see in the NFL right now because I've been thinking tonight, well, really, for a while now, kind of sort of been thinking it in the back of my head, but the NFC is really wide open right now. I was looking at the 16 NFC teams, and, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, even as a fan of a team that went 4-12 and last year, I look at this and think, you know, the window is open for us to swoop in. And I think every team in the NFC, except for the Lions, the Rams, and <coughs> maybe that's about it, should be thinking that same way. I mean, from my perspective, you know, I look within my division. The Rams, you know, it's hard to imagine those guys turning it around that fast. I mean, maybe they can get their feet under them and win five or six games. But I think that might be their ceiling because they are just so messed up from top to bottom that to imagine them turning into a 10 win plus team is just out there, you know? So I don't see that. The Niners, I, I don't know about the Niners. Some people are talking about the Niners as a sleeper team, although, you know, a lot of people are calling them a sleeper team, so they're not really a sleeper team anymore, but point is, a lot of people think they're going to improve next year, and, you know, I don't know, they did win a lot of games at the end of the year, and, you know, there are two parts to that. First part is, maybe they can ride the momentum of that, of those wins at the end of the season, into next year, and have a good year, like the Packers did in 2007. Of course, sometimes those wins are just because the team has nothing to lose, and just pretty much takes a lot of chances and goes crazy, because... It doesn't really matter if they lose, so they just go all out. Sometimes though, sometimes winning games that are meaningless because you've already been eliminated from the playoffs, sometimes it doesn't really mean anything. So, like um, the 2006 Miami Dolphins were victims of that. People were hyping up the 2006 Dolphins to turn it around, and they fell flat on their face. So, I don't know what to expect out of them. You know, looking at them, they obviously have, you know, talent at some positions. They're a little lacking at others. I don't know where all this Sean Hill love came from, though. I mean, he looks to me like a pretty average quarterback. I, I know a lot of people are hyping him up to enter the top ten quarterbacks this year, and I don't see him. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals, they did their thing this offseason. They signed Kurt Warner. It looked like for a while they were going to let him go, which would have been freaking hilarious if they did. But they kept him. They didn't lose anybody of significance. I know they're probably going to lose Edger and James and maybe some other people that don't really matter. But I don't think they got worse or anything. So I expect the same thing out of them. You know, great offense, decent defense, some inconsistency, probably going to win 9 or 10 games, so they're certainly not going to be, I don't think they're going to be a juggernaut in the NFC, but they, they'll be around. I think they'll be around. Um, and then you look at the rest of the NFC. The East, the East, people talk about the East, people hype up the East. I don't think it's going to happen this year. You've got the Giants, who, if anybody in the NFC is going to be a juggernaut and win 12, 13, 14 games, I think it'll be the Giants, but they need to get a quality wide receiver because they're down to Steve Smith and Amani Toomer. No, they don't even have Amani Toomer anymore, actually. It's just Mario Manningham, David Tyree, just nobody. So I, I don't see it from them. I don't think they're going to be able to win any more than 10 games with those receivers, so unless they fix that, <coughs> I don't think they're a juggernaut. The, the Eagles, 
you know, people, I think, talk too much about what they lost in the offseason because I know they're getting a lot of flack for losing some players this offseason and being quiet this offseason. But number one, Brian Dawkins was old. He's going to drop off soon. If not this year, probably next year. So to throw a ton of money at him would have been, you know, stupid. You let him go. You let him play out his twilight year somewhere else. The fans may not like it. A lot of people may not like it, but I'm going to withhold my judgment until I see Dawkins play this year. Number two, Lito Shepard is terrible. You people need to realize how bad Lito Shepard was this last year. I mean, he wasn't even getting playing time. Not only was he getting burned every time he played, he was he, they didn't even put him out there except for when they absolutely had to. You, you could not play much worse than Lito, did less, Lito Shepard did this last year. I think he's just shot. I don't know what happened to him, but I think he's done. But, however, the Eagles do have a problem with close games. They get involved. It seems like this happens every year to them since 2004. They lose so many winnable games, and it catches up to them. So, ultimately, they end up 9-7, and 10-6, and 11-5, and five, and they can't get to those 13, 14 win seasons now because they find ways to blow winnable games. Even last year, it happened. Even though they had that great run at the end, it still happened. I mean, they blew the Bears game, the first Cowboys game, both Redskins games, the Bengals game. Until they figure that out, until they get past that, they're not going to be able to be a juggernaut, a top team in the NFC. And when you can't do that, you have to play your playoff games on the road, and you wear down because you have to go on the road so much. That's part of what happened to them last year. So they have issues. The Cowboys, you know, I mean, their talent's way up here, but they're as far as being a team, they're way down here. And I think it's just going to meet in the middle again. They're going to win nine games, maybe ten, maybe eight. Maybe they'll be in the playoffs, maybe they won't, but... I don't think they're a juggernaut. I mean, you can talk about talent, and, you know, even that isn't what it used to be. I mean, when you lose a guy like Terrell Owens, just from a talent standpoint, things do go a little out of out of shape. <coughs> Redskins, they spent some money this offseason. They went and got some new players. It, it doesn't matter. Dan Snyder runs that team like it's a fantasy football team, and I, I don't see it. I think they're going to be okay again eight wins nine wins so i don't see it from the east the south carolina probably the biggest fraud team there was last year i mean i think we saw their true colors in the playoffs because when they went to the playoffs every flaw they had was magnified a hundred times over and we learned about some new flaws so I don't think they're going to be able to be that kind of team again this year. I look at them. You know, Jake was so bad in that playoff game. That's the kind of game that can ruin a guy's career. It's pretty rare when a player can have a game so bad it screws up their career, but if it can ever happen, it will happen with Jake Dahlm with that playoff game he played. Um, so I have some questions about that. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull out as many close games as they did last year because part of that is luck. I, I'm i not sure about Jonathan Stewart. He might have a sophomore slump. I'm not sure about that defense because Julius Peppers looks like he'll be leaving. I don't think they're going to be able to do the 12-4 and four or 13-3 and three thing again. I, I think they'll be okay, but... I think we learned a lot about them in that playoff game, so I don't see it from them. Tampa Bay has, you know, pretty much admitted that they're going to suck this year. I mean, they haven't gone out and said, oh yeah, we're going to suck this year, but they're rebuilding. I mean, I can't make any sense of the Kellen Winslow trade, but they, they're they rebuilding. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Atlanta. People getting excited about Atlanta. And they could be good. I, I think it's within the realm of possibility that they could be a 12-win-plus team, but 
I smell sophomore slump with those guys. 